our drive school of motoring. Become a safe and confident driver. Well, welcome to this video. Please like and subscribe. It really makes a big difference to us. Now, we're going to take a look, a real comprehensive look at roundabouts today. Uh, I had Oscar to help me with this. And what you'll see is about a 10, 12 minute introduction of full explanation of roundabouts and how to execute them, how to drive them properly. I did that with a lesson with Oscar. So thanks for that. The syncing was a little bit wrong of the cameras. What we're going to do afterwards in a minute is I'm going to drive them after what would have been after Oscar's lesson so you can see what we talked about is put into practice. You'll see what I mean. I hope you enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe. Oscar, we're going to talk about roundabouts today. Now then, first question is, what is the point of them? What's this mad uh, system that everyone gets confused over? Why not have it? giveaways? Why not have traffic lights? What is their purpose in life? Um, to just make it more accessible to different routes and roads. Well, traffic lights would do that. To make it more safe? No. Uh -huh. um, in actual fact, a really high percentage of junction accidents happen at roundabouts. It's actually more dangerous, and I'll explain why in a moment as well. Now, if you imagine... This is a setup as traffic lights, for instance, just yeah. like the crossroads there. Per, if, if, how many cars would you get through an hour? Would you get more oh, through on right. this system, or less, or, yeah. or more on traffic lights, or more on giveaways? You, you get more for this system. And more on that. So, keep, so it's, its purpose in life is to speed up the flow of traffic, and as a consequence of that, um, speeding up the flow, the problem is people literally speed up the flow and don't know when to go. Yeah. So, here's my little pencil somewhere in here. So let's find out where they go wrong. Uh, I'll give you the top five, but I think of the top five anyway. Right, number one. Do you recognise this roundabout? Uh, this is the one you're going to drive. This is a great Bowden roundabout. That's yeah. McDonald's down oh, there. Right, yeah, okay, That's yeah. into Harbour. Okay, yeah. so this is what we're going to do. We're going to be driving all this right. into practice today. Okay, reason number one. Coming in too quickly, seeing cars late and literally pulling in front of them. Right. Reason number two. Coming in too quickly, seeing a car late, jumping on the anchors, bam, get hit from behind because the car behind thinks through your speed, you're going for it. Right. Okay. Reason number three. Coming in too quickly, while they're going around a roundabout, cutting off the corner and taking someone's front up. Pick up the picture. Yeah. Reason number four. Coming in too quickly, realising late, stop looking. Forgetting you've got to go around the corners, like drifting across into another lane because you've, you've jumped ahead to looking like that. Right, yeah. So, number one, coming in too quickly. Fifth reason, ironically, of course, my dawdling, coming round here to the right, uh, dawdle, 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 not looking properly to your left hand side, and the cars come up and come around the inside or come out around there, and you're taking the front up. Right, yeah. There as well. So, Let's talk about mechanics of these roundabouts. You have a left lane, you have a right lane, and obviously you've got the left signal, a right signal, or the option of no signal. Now then, let's see what you know. We know a roundabout is two junctions. There's a junction onto the roundabout and a junction off. So, so has a routine on, has a routine off. You know you're going to be turning left off the road. So when we come off a roundabout, we will be signaling left off a roundabout, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Let's talk about the approach. So, just imagine this. You've you passed your driving test, you've nipped up to McDonald's, you've done a drive through you're driving home with whatever you, you eat, Big Mac or yeah. plant-based or fillet of fish or whatever, <laughs> whatever is your choice of uh, weaponry from up. It's from worse and worse. <laughs> it gets worse and worse, a fillet of fish. Never had one. Never will. <laughs> it's a fish finger. Why? Anyway, um, left lane, right lane. Rather than going home, you know, do you know what? I'm going to nip off to Corby, get myself a lovely jumper from Primark or something like that. Yeah. So, on the approach, which lane, which signal? Um, so you're going, you got up there and around there. Yeah. So you're saying left lane and using the left signal. Fantastic. Brilliant. Change your mind, you're going to go to Great Bowden, fourth exit over here. Which lane, right. which signal on the approach? You go right lane. Yes. And then just keep following around. What signal would you have on the approach? Oh, on the approach. Yeah, we're talking about this here. Maybe right. Right, right lane, signal. right signal. Yeah. Fantastic. Good. Again, this time, we're going to go second exit and follow the road ahead. Uh, which which lane, which signal? Right lane. We've, would it surely be right signal? Right lane, right signal. Oh, left lane, yeah. left, 
left signal. Well, no, because then you'd be pulling in there, wouldn't you? All <laughs> that's there. right. So left lane and would it be no signal? No signal until you get. Yeah, to we'll the... talk about why it is in a minute yeah. here. And this is the thing about roundabouts: you've got to apply principles and not think of rules of a roundabout. Right. You have to be quite adaptive. You have to. Be, we'll talk about that in a second. Now, yeah. if you're going third exit back to your house, back to Harbour, yeah. Which lane, which signal on approach? Uh, you go right lane. Right lane. And then you on approach you go right. Right I signal. Think. Yeah, I think so. So right lane, right signal. Yeah. Correct. Now the question is why? Now on this, on the when you're signalling on the roundabout here, who is benefiting from that lane position you're taking and the signal you're putting on? The people behind you. Really? Do they really care if you're going to off the Corby to buy a jumper or off the Great Bowden to have a coffee or do they really care where... Um, actually the people... They will help from you but the main beneficiary is the people ahead of you. Because right. you're showing them where you're going, they want to know if they can come out right, or okay. give way to you. Because yeah. you're giving way to the right of course. Yeah. So let's go for the principles. Um, a few weeks ago, a couple of lessons ago, we talked about meeting and passing cars. We talked about we're giving out signals to other road users through our road position, our indicators and our speed and it shows your intention. Yeah. Now then, let's see what that, so the beneficiary is the person ahead. So I think going left, you're coming up here, what do they see? Left lane, left signal, what are you going down there? I can pull out. Yeah. Um, if they're taking last exit here, right lane, right signal, what do they see? Right lane, right signal, clearly the go past go me, I'm not going to pull out. Yeah. What do they see when you come around the corner? So you're going to see there, passion. right lane, right signal. What do they see? Right lane, right signal. Get to there, signaling left. What do they see? Coming across, signaling left. I can come out. Right, yeah. Now, with the second exit then, left lane, no signal. They see left lane, no signal. They must be coming past me. We know we're going to signal the earliest opportunity, so we'd put on the left signal here, wouldn't we? Because yeah. the so what's the first thing they see? They see left lane, left signal. Left signal. They must be going down there. Gives them confidence. If you're on that side, it's going to be confusing. You'll probably come think you're coming round. Yeah. So therefore, the third exit is a bit like this one, in regards to right lane, right signal, going past me, going past me, signal left. I can come out. Now, you hear lots of nonsense about a twelve <coughs> o'clock rule, and if your road is after twelve o'clock, less than twelve o'clock, blah 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 blah. Yeah. It's it's a simple way. It's not a rule. It's not in the highway code. It's a, it's a simple. Uh, rule of thumb, if yeah. you like, as best as that, to yeah. sort of do to basically explain what you're doing if a road is there. But if you can think about what am I doing with my position, what am I doing with my signal, to tell other people what I'm intending to do, yeah, it'll, 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 it's a more of an intelligent way of looking at it. If you want another rule of thumb, better than this 12 o'clock rule, yeah. is how many exits are on this roundabout? Five. Five. So if the exit, as a rule of thumb, if the exit you're taking is more than 50% of your total exits, be on the right. So if you're taking yeah. the third exit, it's three greater than 2.5 years, yeah. be on the right, is two greater than two, no, be on the left. At the end of the day, we're doing about the flow of traffic. So you've got two lanes going to four lanes. Well, how would you split the traffic evenly? Well, two to go that way, two to go right. Right, yeah, yeah. That's the way it is. Now, yeah. for instance, that's why you can't go with hard and fast rules. It might change, and if it does change against the basics, to help people, they'll put planning boards and paint on the road. For right. example, over in Kettering, if you're coming from Northampton Junction 8, that's the one that goes up to, if you went over it, you go into Kettering, goes down to the double yeah, roundabout. Yeah, I think I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, if you go ahead, if you're at 12 o'clock rule, you'd say, oh, left side, go left onto the A45 or into Kettering. Yeah. Well, they put left lane only for going left, because if everything that was left and ahead, you'd end up with 80% of the traffic on the left-hand side, so they move the traffic ahead to Kettering on the right, there's almost like balance up the flow of traffic coming through. Yeah. So you can't go use hard and fast rules, look out for the planning boards. Um, so on a four-way exit then, thinking that same principle like a four-way exit yeah. here, uh, well if I was going left, left lane, left signal, Yeah. there we go down there. If you're going straight ahead, well left lane, no signal, what do they see? Left lane, you would see a left signal there. And then my rule, rule of thumb, is two greater than two. No. no, so therefore left because that's there. So you'd yeah. be like saying, if you took the 12 o'clock rule, saying, well, if it was there, slightly at 11 o'clock, I'm going to go on the left, and it's there, I'm going to go on the right. Well, that right, makes no yeah. sense. Yeah. So you can't use, you know what I mean? So you're being a little yeah. bit more, you're being a little bit more thinking about 
how you're presenting yourself to other road users rather than thinking about what I am doing. You're thinking about what yeah. you're doing, for what, how you're affecting. And that's advanced driving. You're thinking about how I'm affecting, how, how is my communication going to affect other road users. Yeah. Now let's talk about coming off these roundabouts. Now we know we signal if it benefits and hold off if it cancels. So if I was turning left off this roundabout on the third exit here, yeah. where would I be able to put a signal left at the earliest opportunity without being confusing? Uh, as soon as you pass that lane, so like about there. Well, actually, that's an island there, isn't it? It just splits into a little island, oh, doesn't right, it? Oh, okay, right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, just as you reach there. Okay, yeah. Now, on a hazard routine, what do you do before signaling? You check your mirrors. Brilliant, you check your mirrors. Now, where's the risk coming from from here? Uh, cars coming out of, or coming out of there, yep. or, yeah. Or from round or, yeah. there. Now, the GBSA, which is our syllabus, if you like, say, check your mirrors. Yeah. <clears throat> now, it, I've, I've been kind of teaching you this. This is called roadcraft. But I've been using DBSA terminology. Roadcraft does not use the word mirrors. Instead, because our system is mirror signal position, speed gear, look assess, decide, and that. Yeah. Their system, they don't say mirrors and they don't <coughs> say signal. They say information through the whole process. Right. Now, information means <coughs> what's around you, what's behind you as well. But because you're a bit thick, Oscar, we have to say mirrors to make you look behind. We can't just say information because you can't work it out for yourself. Yeah. You're gathering information, you see. So, you're gathering information and you're a signal. You're giving out information. <coughs> you're taking in, you're giving out. You're thinking yeah. about other road users, not about yourself. So, as you come around here, if you're going to be signalling here, you're gathering information here. In actual fact, what I want you to do, if you're taking a third exit, look across into the second exit. Yeah. That's where risk could be coming from. As you're looking across, you'll be looking over that mirror, won't you? Yeah. And then you can just drop down, look what's in that left mirror, signal and move across. The problem with it is, and that failure to look on the left-hand side is, uh, I can't remember, it's, it's like the second biggest reason of failures on driving test. Right. Because what happens is, People go, oh, mirror, mirror signal, signal. I've been told to look in my mirror, my signal. What have you actually taken from it? Yeah. You just look. You just gone for a motion. Yeah. You're yeah. gathering information. Be really certain about what you're taking in before you say, well, this is what I'm doing. Tend to do signal and moving across. So you're looking down there. Is it okay? Signal, move across. Yeah. Now, last thing, and then we're going to put it into practice and drive one, two, three, four. Okay. <coughs> is this, it's very easy to straighten the roundabout coming across. The reason that is happening is because people tend to look at the exit and drive straight to it. Yeah. Now, if you know you're taking the second exit in this example, yeah. what you want to be doing as you're coming around is look into that exit and aim for the island. Okay. And when you aim for the island, when you reach the island, signal left, and then use your eyes and almost like glide watch your line, you know you're going to go into the second exit, follow that curb line into the exit and just move your eyes around there. If you look across there, you will straighten that across. It's yeah. so common. Um, and what you'll find as well, I've been teaching right from the beginning with push pushable steering, is pushable steering will come into its own because as you're coming into this second exit here, you'll be pulling it that way to go around. That hand's yeah. now free to get that indicator on. That hand will come up to take it round to the left, round here, that hand will take over, and then that hand's now free to, is it okay, take off the indicator, move it around, accelerate, and bring your hand back in. Right, so, yeah. push pull steering is not because I'm anal, not because I've got OCD, or, yeah. well, it's not the only reason, uh, <laughs> but it makes it really, as I show you, as you're coming out of the roundabout, then you can accelerate away. Yeah. And last thing is, when we did our junctions, we talked to three phases. The first phase was to get the speed and gear at the point of turn. Yeah. Do the manoeuvre, accelerate away. Same thing on the roundabout. You have a point of turn, it's going to be a bit further back, so as you're approaching into it, we know we're going to roll down and slow until you can go, so you can stop at the giveaway line, that's why you're not going to come in too fast, because you're slowing as you're coming in. So it's either going to be second gear, third gear, 15 or 20, depending on what, how far, the bigger the roundabout, the further you can open up, you can make a decision. Yeah. The higher speed, therefore, the higher gear you will be. If you, if you go into gear one as you approach that, as in like if you have to slow down, you're slowing yeah. until it's safe to go. If you get so close to it, you, but you're going to roll down the gears. So you might say, for argument's sake, here, you might be doing about 20 miles now, you're in third gear, and yeah. you're slowing it down, being around the corner. 
it's now second gear, right. it's now rolling second, it's now into first gear, it's rolling right, first, yeah. I'll have to stop this cars there. Yeah. But the reason is, you're always in the right gear, you're always ready to go now. Yeah. And the reason roundabouts are so dangerous, and also the reason why it lo fails a lot of driving tests, is you've got to be ready to go now, not sitting there dwelling on time, because what's okay yeah. there, if you delay a second, that car's going to be around, you're moving off in front of it. Yeah. So the reason if you roll down the gears, you can't. You know all you do is press that gas pedal, boom, we're yeah. off. So you make a decision with confidence. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to drive up round here, we're going to drive back to this roundabout, <coughs> and we're going to take the four exits one at a time, then have a little drive round and come, so drive off around there, then we're going to drive and do a bit of rural roads and come back, Yeah. and do number two, number three, number four, and that should take us through to the end of the lesson. Yeah. Any questions? <coughs> No, not really. The first approach here, we're going to go first exit left at the roundabout. I'm now looking at the planning board, I can read it comfortably, so checking my mirrors, putting on a signal, position's fine, off the gas, for about half the distance up to the point of turn, not doing much else. About halfway there, just gently engaging the brake, and just firming it up a bit. Whilst I'm braking, braking through the gear change into third gear, I'm easing up, I'm at the point of turn, rolling in on third gear, is there anyone there? A little bit of gas and a roll and away we go. New road, new mirrors, cancel the indicator and moving off. Now this time I am going to take the second exit and follow the road ahead. We're heading up towards Kettering. So again, when I can read the planning board, I'll check in my mirrors. Don't need an indicator as we're following road ahead. Off the gas, I'm going to drop into fifth gear though because I've come from sixth gear. Just letting it roll in. I'm not doing anything on those pedals, just letting it roll. Now it's gently engaging the brake, and as I get closer to it, I'm gonna try third gear. Road's opening up to the right, I'm slowing it down. Drop it into second gear here. Clear on the right, let's roll it in. I'm aiming for the island, I'm looking across to the left, I'm indicating left, my right hand brings it around, and I'm following the curb line round to the left, accelerating away. Removing the indicator, new road, new mirrors, gas and go. So as we come into this roundabout, I'm going to take the third exit following the road ahead. So that means the left lane to follow the road around the roundabout. Checking my mirrors, I can read the board, don't need a signal, my position is fine, I'm off the gas. And then so gently engage the brake, nowhere near a gear change yet. As I get closer to the point of turn, I'm slowing it down, I'm dropping into third gear, easing off the gas, looking across, rolling it around. One, second exit, I'm looking into it, signaling at the island at the earliest opportunity, and away we go. Indicator off, new road, new mirrors, and accelerate away, and up to speed. So on this approach, we're gonna go third exit right towards Market Harbour. I'm in six gear, I'm doing 60 miles an hour, and I'm gonna keep that speed up until I get to the speed section. So when I can read the board comfortably about now, mirrors, signal, position, off the gas, not doing anything, just gonna drop into fifth gear though, get a little bit more engine braking. See, I'm not, oh, no braking yet. Now it's gently on the brake, and I've got my gear ready into third gear for the point of turn here. Turn and look, it's nice and open, I can keep it going in third because I can make a decision earlier on. Counter my exits, one, two, I'm looking into two, I'm checking my mirror, signaling left, rolling around, always checking my left hand side in case that changes, get rid of the indicator, new road, new mirrors, accelerate away, 40 miles now, there's a change of speed, and we're up to speed. Now on this one, we're gonna go second exit left, following the road ahead, or second exit, follow the road, might be an instruction. Check my mirrors. Now look, there's cars ahead of me here, so I'm just rolling it in, dropping it to third. Now I just slow it down. It hasn't opened yet, because it doesn't open till here. I'm now looking a bit restricted from the vision. I can't see because of that car. Leaving that for a car to come round. They're going left. I'm moving away. Getting ahead of that car there, signaling left. Away we go. So you need to be quite positive and you need to be the car in the position so when it's ready to go, the car is prepared so when you decide to go, you're going. And where it all goes wrong is if we're faffing around with feet and pedals, there's a delay between wanting to go and actually go and what was a lovely safe space has now become uh, a non-safe space. People commit, move off and the car has come around you pulling off in front of the car.
So the last approach here, I'm going to take the fourth exit right to Great Bowden, 60 miles an hour, sixth gear again, coming in here, read the board signs, mirror, mirror, signal, position over to the right, off the gas, just dropping it to five gear, a little bit more engine braking, still checking my mirrors, gently on the brake, and just firming it down now, getting the gear changed, nice and leisurely into third gear, I'm looking across, road is clear, 100% sure, roll it round. And as we block that down, we don't have to roll down the gears, we go to the gear that we need at the point of turn, so we can cut out uh, the fourth gear, we go straight from five to four. Looking across, signalling left, rolling it around. Thanks for watching. For more regularly uploaded videos, don't forget to like and subscribe.